The idea that me, a young me, should not be assessed as stringently as Asian and white kids because of the kind of racism that maybe has nibbled at the very margins of my life now and then. So you're a middle-class black kid. Yes, I'm thinking about me. I did not suffer anything I would call disadvantage. I knew what racism was in many ways. I've, I've written about it. I still do. But that was not disadvantage. And if anybody doubts that, because the idea is supposed to be that just being black is this hideous burden, including suppose some cop at a mall paid more attention to me than to a white kid. Yeah, <laughs> that happens. Would I have rather have been me, middle class black me in the 70s and 80s or even in 2023, or a person who weighs 400 pounds with acne who is white? And I'm not trying to make up a cartoon character. You're white but you are extremely large and there's nothing you can do about it. That's a difficult condition. And you have very bad skin. Which would you rather be? Which would you rather be? Middle class and black or white and simply having really bad skin, serious bad skin, psoriasis, and there's not much you can do about it. It's at the point where frankly, you'd rather be the middle class black kid. Whereas 60, 70 years ago, I think a lot of people would have thought, I'll be white with, you know, acne as long as I don't have to be black. That matters. I, I have I have a, two comments. One of them is a quick thing that, you know, it's I think it was Derek Bell faces at the bottom of the well where I first saw this device that you just employed of the hypothetical where, you know, how much would you pay not to be black? His point was people would rather be a lot of things than to be black because you were at the bottom of the well. And you're making the point that, that that's not true anymore. Uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't trade uh, blackness for psoriasis, not not in a heartbeat. Mm -mm. Richard Rothstein is a well-intended guy who is absolutely appalled that preferences are about to be banned. I don't think we need to pretend that they're gone. He thinks that this is a terrible thing and that those responsible for admissions processes should basically resist. They should revolt as you know, the Jewish radicals used to say, and resist not taking race into account in the same way as the good people resisted the Dred Scott decision. He actually brings up the Dred Scott decision. And what really bothers him is that if you don't have racial preferences and instead it's socioeconomic, you bring in poor black kids, but not middle-class black kids. The idea that you no longer get a preference if you're black and you didn't grow up disadvantaged for him, that is rank injustice because to be a middle-class black person is to be subject to the forces of what's called societal racism as well. And that that therefore means that middle-class black kids should have preferences. Now, preferences is a very euphemistic word. What he's saying is middle-class black applicants should not be expected to have grades and test scores as high as other applicants. And I contest that. I can understand saying that in 1966 because of what racism was like and because racial preferences are a benevolent and in their way wise experiment. But for somebody to write that in 2023, and so Richard Rothstein, and he's a man of a certain <laughs> age, and then some, he's stuck in a way of thinking that no longer applies to the present. I hated his article. We are no longer in an America where essentially in an oversimplified way, everybody is either white or black. That's the way it was in the 60s, with all due allowances for the complexity. But still, this is post-Immigration Act of 1965. There are too many other kinds of people for us to be looking at this as if it were still 1965. And honestly, and I, I may be missing something on this, this idea that if a certain number of black students aren't admitted to say the top 35 universities, the most selective, that there's gonna be this major problem with getting black people into elite pipelines, that all hell would break loose, that there'd be this massive reverse of progress, that if you go to UC San Diego, somehow you're barred from the kinds of connections that somebody who went to Cornell had. I'm not aware of the documentation of that. And I am aware of, for example, the fact that racial preferences were banned at the University of California in the late 90s. And a study has been done as to whether or not that has affected incomes of black and Latino people, apparently only Latino ones, but not black ones. So what, what, what's the issue? I understand that hypothetical that you're not going to get the Obama kids. 
and and that therefore you're not going to be able to work for big banks or whatever it is that we're talking about. But is that really true that you have to go to one of those schools in order to get positions like that? Or is it that those schools make it so very much more likely that you must submit middle class black kids to lower expectations than others? That's the question. Using that word preferences is a game. 